Hello, and welcome to The League Presents, a show by the League of Women Voters of Newton, where we will talk about topical issues important to our community. My name is Marcia Johnson, and I am president of the League of Women Voters Newton. In honor of Pride Month, I have two Newton High School students with me. Ben Miner, who is a rising senior at Newton South High School, where he is president of the Newton South GSA, which is the Gender and Sexuality Alliance Club. In his free time, Ben also enjoys musical theater, cooking, and language learning. And I've been joined by Amia Smith, who is an officer of the GSA at the Newton North High School. She's a rising senior, and this will be her second year as an officer, but fourth as a member of the club. This is such an important topic, given what's going on in other parts of the country. So let's get right into our conversation about right here in Newton. Um, when I first met the both of you, um, your introduction to me included that you were each members of the GSA. Um, so I mean, I'd like to kind of learn about what is the GSA, who's the audience, why is it important to the LGBT community, um, or just the high school community at large. What does it, you know, kind of tell me about it from a North perspective and then, then if you talk to, because it's slightly different names. So go ahead, Amia. Yeah, so for us at North, the GSA is really a place for both queer students at the school to have a safe space and to connect with other people who can relate to the experiences that they face, as well as a club that tries to make the school a an easier place to be in as a queer student um, and like that tries to educate the school on how it can better support the queer students there. So you're looking at the straight folks and teachers and the yeah. general educational community beyond that. Yeah and straight students are welcome in the club as well because um, obviously straight people can enjoy queer culture and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, so they are definitely welcome in the club, but it is obviously like meant for queer right. students. How large a club is it? Um, it depends on the day. It's not like a huge commitment-based club, but we usually have around ten people at each meeting, and it sometimes gets up to like fifteen to seventeen. And overall, just your total population. Some may show up one meeting or next, but kind of the people who have signed up for or members of GSA. I would say up to 30. Oh, good, great, thank you. Ben, what about at South? Um, I think the South GSA shares a lot of similarities with North. Um, lots of our mission is the same. Um, the GSA originally was founded um, by Mr. Robert Parlin, okay. um, and it was actually the first public school GSA in the country um, at South. And um, like at North, um, we, it, it sort of the GSA started as a safe space for queer students, and now as um, being LGBTQ has become more of um, it's become safer, mm -hmm. and the community has become more accepting. Um, the GSA has evolved to meet the needs of the community, and really, lots of what we do now is um, education for the broader school population. Um, we host celebrations. But we're, at our core, we're um, a support group and a safe space for queer students. Okay, great. So, um, and how big is your club down in um, Similar sizing. I think um, week to week, we can have anywhere from 10 to 15. Um, our email list is like 40 people. Oh, okay. Um, I think it's a relative health size. Yeah, sizes. and great. I think, I think it's, it's not necessarily representative of the queer population. No, 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 no that's right. At South, um, but. Some people are joiners and some people aren't. Yeah, right? exactly. And different points of time in their lives. Um, so, um, so when did this, when does GSA, when did GSA originate at South? And for, like, for how long has that been a club at South? So it's been a club since it was founded. It was, um, let's see, last year, 2020, we celebrated 30 or 31 years. Wow, that's um, great. Yeah, so um, Bob Parlin really did a lot of work. He, he recently retired, um, but he really did a lot of work to make sure um, that it happened. Great, and Amia, how, how long has it been at um, North? I'm not completely sure like 
about the exact number of years uh, because it's not like as much an important part of our story um, as it is at South. But it's definitely been around for a good while. Uh, like I would say definitely over 15 years. Great. Now that's really good news. Good for you. So Ben, what are some of the initiatives that GSA has undertaken to make your school more accepting and respecting of uh, LGBTQ plus students? Mm -hmm. Um, so every December we host our LGBTQ plus day of awareness um, and that's usually um, one of our main education days. Um, South and North love to host um, like days where um, different classes can sign up and learn about affinity groups. Um, so we have ours in December and that usually consists of different panels um, and different topics that are really relevant. It's like uh, what, what would be a topic? Um, for example, our past one, we hosted um, a mini lesson of LGBTQ history. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, we also hosted a um, black and queer panel for in conjunction with um, our black student union. Mm -hmm. um, and lots of stuff like that. Great. Great. Amiya, what are some things that GSA has been doing at North? Um, so we also have an educational day called To Be Glad Day, um, which is usually either at the end of April or the beginning of May, um, which has like similar panels. So some past ones have been how to be a good ally or um, like the intersection between religion and mm. LGBTQ identities. Um, we also try to help teachers, like make it easier for teachers to um, create a good environment for their LGBTQ students. So an example of that would be last year, we realized that in a lot of language departments, um, teachers were having trouble with using the correct pronouns for like non-binary students mm -hmm. in the language that they were speaking in. Um, so they just weren't educated on like the gender neutral language in that language. Um, and so we created a presentation and we got some input from native speakers to try and give them some options so that they could address their students in the correct way. Um, and we also do a lot of um, activities with other groups. So sometimes for like Women's History Month, we'll work together with one of the um, groups that supports women in the school and we will help them with one of their initiatives and we'll like include LGBTQ women um, so that their um, activity is more diverse. Wow, great. And so you mentioned that, so yeah. the GSA at South, um, been there for 30 years and it's the way you worded it, I'm interpreting that this is a national organization? Um, it's, or? n it's not, um, it's a nationwide acronym. I don't know that there's a national oh, okay. organization. Um, but it's, it's like different, like for example, a workplace could have a GSA oh, or an okay. LGBT right. affinity group. It's, mm -hmm. it's just like a wording of a club, yeah. Great. Um, one of the things that I heard in our original conversation is that the use of correct pronouns is important to the LGBTQ plus community. So why is it important for us, everybody, um, to use uh, individuals' correct pronouns and what is the impact of not using them, and how do we do a better job of learning? And I know um, Marsha Tabank and I have given some, we have some resources uh, posted on the league's website. So, um, Amia, you want to start? Kind of talk about the pronouns. I would say it's just really important to use a person's correct pronouns because it's it's kind of like their name, like it's something that is very important to their identity. So if you use the incorrect pronouns, then Oh, especially for trans people, it can um, make them feel as if like people don't care enough to address them correctly, and it can make them feel as if they are excluded from that group, um, which can be very isolating. Um, and like that also is part of the impact of using the incorrect pronouns. But a way to make it easier to just like normalize the use of correct pronouns is just to introduce yourself with your pronouns even if you don't use um, like pronouns that, if, even if you use the pronouns that people would assume that you would use, it's important to introduce yourself with your pronouns so that other people do it too and it doesn't seem 
um, like abnormal if somebody were to do it. So I would introduce, if we were just meeting for the first time, I'd say Mar Marcia Johnson, and I use the pronouns she, her. Is that yeah. kind of how it's doing it? Mm -hmm. um, so Ben, how, from a, um, how do people who are not aware of, of this, and, and I'm learning, so I want to be you know, very upfront, um, how do they kind of, places to learn because um, especially people in my generation um, probably are the least aware. Um, so what would you recommend some things that maybe the league could do to help educate people and because so it becomes more natural and it doesn't feel so, because it's, it's awkward to begin with, you know, you mm -hmm. learn something new anytime you learn something new. You don't learn, don't play golf the first time and become a pro, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So can you help around how we best educate the broader community and what experience you might have had at South with pronouns, like um, Amiya said, with language teachers or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I just want to preface by saying that I am cisgender. I use the pronouns that um, align with the gender I was assigned So why don't birth. you just say a little bit about cisgender yeah. again? So cisgender just means that you identify with the sex that you were assigned at birth. Okay. So when the doctor says, it's a boy, it's a girl, <laughs> um, and you use the set of pronouns um, and identify as the gender that you were assigned at birth. Okay. So I am male, I use he, him pronouns, mm -hmm. that is the sex that I was assigned at birth. I'm cisgender. Okay. Um, in terms of um, pronouns, um, sometimes people tend to think of it as such this mental barrier and they get in over their heads. Um, what but do you can, mean by that? I think that especially when something is new, it's not, it seems foreign, it yep. seems difficult, mm -hmm. it seems scary. Um, but people actually use like, um, for example, the pronouns they, them all the, the time. time. Yes. It's like, oh, someone left their wallet. I'd better go return it to, to them. them. Right. You don't know who left their wallet. Right. And it's really in terms of um, doing better and correcting yourself. Um, I, I used this analogy once with one of my um, teachers who was having trouble. I said, think about it like you're at the dog park and you said, and you meet someone's dog and you say, oh, what's his name? And the person, the dog owner says, oh, actually her name is Susie or whatever. <laughs> and you say, oh, sorry, she's so pretty. So that's all it takes. It's just a simple correction and it's not, it's not, putting, when you mess up, it's not putting the blame on the person who you misgendered. It's not making a big deal about it. You correct yourself and you move on. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's something that I've been hearing in GSA that's mm -hmm. been um, seconded by a lot of people. Yeah. So in your club, for instance, that's something, um, Amelia, that you would help people to understand, you know, whether it's teachers or other students? Yeah, I just feel like especially when it's pronouns like they, them pronouns, which people seem to have a harder time yeah. using rather than like a trans girl or something. Mm -hmm. um, it's just especially important to kind of repeat um, the correction. So if they continue to use the wrong pronouns to just correct them and move on each time it happens rather than letting it slide after a while um, so that it kind of gets ingrained that the they then pronouns are the ones that they're supposed to be using. Good. So I know I just started using, because I really didn't understand the importance of it, to be very honest, and have now put it on my um, signature in my emails, just trying to, uh, again, getting used to breaking into a new behavior. Um, all right, today it seems that more, pe more people are identifying themselves as a member of the LGBTQ plus community. What would you say enables people to feel more com comfortable and confident in doing so that that may not have happened in the past? What's kind of out there? I think especially with the rise of the internet, um, people are able to access so much more information and um, especially for someone um, who might be like part of the Gen X generation who didn't have the internet growing up. Um, they may not have seen people who uh, identify the way they do or look like them. And I think people now 
are able to see that representation and that really affirms their identity and allows them to feel confident in themselves. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, it's not like that everywhere in the country. Uh, <laughs> we're very lucky to live in an area that is um, relatively accepting mm -hmm. and safe for um, LGBTQ plus individuals. And so that's also um, why we see it. Mm -hmm. Amia, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think uh, an important thing to consider is just like the history of how LGBTQ people were treated in this country, uh, especially during like the 80s uh, with the AIDS epidemic. Oh, right. Um, yes. mm -hmm. So like one main reason why we don't have a lot of older LGBTQ people is because of that epidemic, because a lot of them um, passed away mm -hmm. during that time. And so like now that the new generation is growing up, um, it may seem like there are more because we're not affected by that and therefore um, like there's not like a bunch of them dying mm -hmm. so more people are going to identify as LGBTQ um, and then also like if you were growing up during that time it was a very um, taboo thing and a lot of people wouldn't identify as queer or their upbringing would tell them that it was wrong and so even if they grew up and like learned more about it it still would be scary for them so I think just like now that it's been a lot more destigmatized and uh, more of our generation are educated about it it's just a lot more comfortable for people to identify as LGBTQ. Okay I mean speaking of that um as we think about the challenges that the LGBTQ plus community faces in many, you brought up a bit, we were in a safe place, many United States states and communities. Um, what steps um, could the Newton public school system or the Newton community at large do to be more inclusive and help folks who still may be a little reticent or reluctant to be out there? Um, so what kind of challenges and what can we do and you know and this is where maybe the league can help and you know this is the first time we've done a program like this and so I'm really pleased about that and I really want to publicly thank Marsha Tabankin for bringing this to the league for us. So what kinds of things, challenges are there that this community can do for you and your folks, that your friends, your community? I think a uh, really important thing is just representation in like the government, on TV, in the media, just in general of LGBTQ people um, so that like policies and just like the media in general can reflect the needs of LGBTQ people as well as um, like straight people. Um, so like endorsing um, LGBTQ friendly or LGBTQ candidates is very important and like voting for them as well. Um, especially if they're opposed by someone who may not be supportive of the community. Um, and just like what we're doing right now, just like discussing these issues and spreading them through the community so that people are aware. Ben? Um, I think Newton, um, we sort of think of Newton as this safe haven from hate. Um, that's not necessarily the case. Um, like, um, for example, um, for North's TP Glad Day. Um, I don't know if you wanted. You can. Okay. Um, <laughs> for North's TP Glad Day, they were hosting a drag queen um, performance, and that came under attack by the group Parents Defending Education. Right. I know that. Um, and there was a protest in Newton Center. So that sort of um, event um, was really eye opening for a lot of people um, because. Newton is not exempt from um, challenges, and I think um, to echo what Amir was saying, you know, the work that we're doing here, just getting the message out there and encouraging people to be leaders and to be advocates for those around them and to spread kindness, I think is really um, the main goal. So, um, thank you. So, Amir, I heard you mention something about policies. What are some policies? If you, whether it's Massachusetts or here in Newton, some things that are maybe Newton specific, whether at, through the school system or the community, um, that we could do, strengthen or do differently, fix 
things that might be broken or whatever? I'm not super educated on the policies okay. just because like, I'm not at the voting age yet. So, Well, we tried to fix that yeah. and it didn't go very far. <laughs> um, but I would definitely say just um, allowing um, like kids, especially if they're in high school, to have more control over um, like expressing their gender identity, like maybe changing their name or pronouns without notifying parents. Um, ah, okay. Especially since that is not going to harm them at all, um, or just being able to um, make decisions about their identity and um, have that be their own business if they don't feel comfortable sharing it with their parents um, and not have the school share things that the students don't want to share. I think that's So right now, if, are you saying, am I interpreting that if you change your name, pronouns, or whatever in school, that that is shared um, It depends on how you do it, but okay. if it's like an Aspen, which is our... Um, oh, you mentioned that. Is that like... It's like our... Our portal. Our port it's it's where they put, uh, put in grades and where you request classes. Um, so if you change your name and your pronouns in there, which is where most people do it, just so that it's like mm -hmm. kind of everywhere, um, parents can see that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I think a big um, policy shift at South that was really successful that I would like to see throughout Newton um, is gender neutral bathrooms. Um, South, uh, the South GSA in conjunction with our Gender Equity Club um, worked really, really hard with administration um, in order to get designated gender neutral bathrooms. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a really big issue because we were having trouble actually finding the bathrooms to be gender neutral mm -hmm. bathrooms. Um, and I've noticed that it's not everywhere. They aren't everywhere in Newton. Mm -hmm. um, and so that when you say everywhere in Newton, meaning public buildings? In public buildings. Um, yeah. um, they aren't everywhere. And so um, I'd love to see that happen. Um, and I'd love to see um, more involvement. Um, I know this year we had our Newton Celebrates Pride um, Coalition, um, which um, I'm a part of. And I'd love to see more involvement from our legislators in town in um, City Hall and so the City Council as well as you're talking about our state delegation because there's we have a, a state rep representative um, depending on where you live it's a different person and then we have our state senator so you're talking about them as well as your city councilors mainly you know, yeah mainly main, just the city council city but councilors. okay yeah that would be also much appreciated <laughs> so actually it's interesting I know this was not kind of what we talked about but um, a number of years ago, um, the I, I want to say a class at the Horseman School, which at the time was on Watertown Street, um, wanted, or it was maybe it was Day, one of the two schools, looking at how to get legislation passed through the city council, and they went through a whole the whole process of getting the thing on the docket, which is the agenda and so forth, to get a non -smoke, no smoking um, space around the school and the Boys and Girls Club. So one of the things you might think about is working with your city councilors, and you each have three, there are two at large and one ward, about how you might go through doing something like that, that might be something for your GSA, or maybe even going across schools, because that, that would be a way to kind of get some visibility and get some conversation going on that. Because mm -hmm. that would be, I know people do struggle with the gender neutral bathrooms, and I know there was a whole thing and, um, a number of years ago. But I think that would be a very worthwhile thing for y'all to do, and I think the league would probably help you do that. So, um, so what else? Um, what about in Massachusetts? How, how are things from again? You know, because you hear about Florida, and you hear, you know, various, typically the, you know, southern. Um, states, and there may be others, but you hear about Florida and Texas, they kind of take over the, um, the news, news, news cycles. But is there anything that at the state level that you're aware of that could help you? Because we have some pretty progressive and very open minds in our state delegation. Um, and this is a good way to kind of let them know. 
anything from a state level that you can think of? I mean, I would say it's probably some of the same, same stuff thing. for Newton. Um, I think there are definitely like parts in Western Massachusetts that are less accepting of LGBTQ right. people, but I don't know how much of that is because of the state legislature. Um, it might just be more of a community thing in those areas. Um, Good point. I think definitely out of the states, Massachusetts is one of the better ones in terms of LGBTQ legislation. Um, we're lucky. Yeah. So I don't know off the top of my like that, I don't know. That's okay. Yeah. That was not kind of a, a, a curveball. I know I talked when people say, how are things going? I said, as long as I stay in my little Massachusetts bubble, I'm doing yeah. okay. Yeah. Right. Um, I, uh, I don't have much to add. I, um, I'm just um, happy that we have such amazing individuals as Maura Healy. And yes. I actually um, heard Ayanna Presley talk at um, Boston Pride and it felt reassuring to know that people in Massachusetts legislature were working to support mm -hmm. the queer community. Yeah. So, so if you don't know, if you haven't met, I don't know if you've met your state rep, mm -hmm. and it's either going to be Kay Khan, John Lawn, or Ruth Balzer, it's probably Ruth Balzer, it's probably for you, and um, where I think you live, it would be Kay Khan. If you haven't reached out to them, um, I know they would love to talk to you, and Cindy Cream is our state senator for the entire city. I think she's got, I think she has pieces of Wellesley and Brooklyn, but she's got all of Newton. So anyway, um, so in your GSA club meetings, do you talk about some of the things that are going on in the rest of the country? And does that, does that have an impact or you just take a sigh of relief that you're here? Uh, no, it definitely comes up in our discussions and it definitely does have an impact on us just because like, it, it's painful to know that there are people yes. like us in other areas that are just facing those horrible things. And actually last year we had a walkout in protest of oh, good. Okay. the anti-trans bills uh -huh. just across like the nation. Well, that's good. Um, and we definitely did discuss um, kind of just the importance of combating those things. Um, but yeah. Okay. All right. So. Um, Thank you both. Um, I wish we had had more time. Um, you're both very interesting, and I really wish you well in your summer and your pursuits of college next year, because I know you'll be very successful. So in closing, um, Amiya and Ben, thank you so very much for taking time from your end of school year activities. I know that can be very a busy time. I think this was a very thoughtful and educational conversation. I really appreciate your sharing information about the GSA, something I did not know about it, importance of correct usage of pronouns, and being a member of the LGBTQ community in Newton and the Newton Public School System. Uh, for the audience, please contact the League of Women Voters of Newton with uh, comments or ideas on this show and future topics by emailing info at lwvnewton.org the specific comments and opinions are made during this program do not ne necessarily represent those of the League of Women Voters. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan, multi-use, grassroots organization that encourages uh, informed and active pr participation in local, state, and national uh, government. The League develops positions on issues but does not support or oppose candidates or political parties. Membership in the League is open to all citizens of voting age. You will be able to view this program on newtv.org or find a link, to, link, link sorry, to this show on the League's website, lwvnewton.org. Also on the League website are links to all our, our past episodes. On behalf of the Newton League of Women Voters, thank you to our guests and crew. As we begin the transition to summer, I hope you all can get outside, enjoy the weather, your families and friends. Be well, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.